Hey guys, welcome to our Slate Live. This is number nine. I'm here with the beautiful Hazel. Hi. We've got a really cool haircut in store for you as well. And I'm just going to explain a little bit about what we're going to do and what. So what we're going to do is, we're going to start in the back here. You can see that I've let it all hang out. It's beautiful, beautiful, curly textured hair. So we're going to take this in to make a really nice, quite flat, high graduation. We then have sectioned off the sides and we're going to again take a quite nice, tight and flat. And the top's going to be this beautiful, rounded layer. So it's going to, it's going to have that tight, graduated feel on the sides and in the back. And then just this nice, rounded layers. It's going to come into quite a curly fringe as well. So I want to show you how we're going to start in the back as well. So sorry, I'm going to have a spinning round as well. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working from the centre back first, and then we're going to be working out afterwards as well. So as always, guys, if you do have any questions, whether the film's live or not, you can always come back to us and ask us any questions you have. So just drop them in the comments below, and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you. So we're coming to you live from our London Academy here, our brand new London Academy that's opened just this year as well. And so we're getting all the details done with it, but we've already had a couple of classes here. We just finished one class today, a group class, and they're coming in again tomorrow. So lots of exciting things going on. I'm just gonna grab some clips, since I've forgotten them, you have to give me one second. Okay, so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be starting this haircut from a nice center section. So we're gonna take a really nice little center section here for you guys, and we're gonna show you how we're gonna work through this flat. So I'm gonna start this from the top, and I'm gonna work my way down towards the bottom. Now the reason why I'm gonna start this from the top here and not from the bottom is whenever you work from the bottom, you're more likely to build more weight. So you're more likely to make a much heavier graduation. And because we wanna go for something a little more modern, something that's a little more flat, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be working from the top first and then coming down afterwards. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll start working through, I'm working with a wide tooth comb. Obviously this textured hair can be quite hard to get through as well, luckily for me. Um, Hazel's hair is quite easy, but we obviously want to be a little bit careful. So we're just going with a wide tooth comb first to start with. Nice bit of tension because it just makes everything a lot easier to blend as well. So you can see that what I'm doing is I'm pointing my fingers down, but my fingers are not angled very inwards. They're angled more flat, so not very inwards, more flat. This is going to give one of those more flatter, modern, graduated feels, as opposed to one of these more classic, heavier ones as well. Pop your head down. So we always, always appreciate when you guys watch this and if you like and share it, you know, we get a lot of viewings each month for our different lives from Hairbrain and from Slate. So we really appreciate you guys spreading the love and getting it out there as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work from the bottom back to the top, making sure that everything's nice and clean and work through properly. So we've got that nice angle, that nice baseline. What I want to do is, as I take sections next on the head, and I can already see that shape's coming in really nice, so it's a really nice kind of flat graduation. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working through vertical sections, and I'm going to be over-directing to the previous. What I mean by this is I'm going to be working with vertical sections across. So if I show you, I'm just going to take another vertical section across. So we've taken the first one vertical down, then the next one, and what we'll be doing is we'll be over-directing the hair a little bit to the last. This is gonna create more of a square feeling. So it's quite a, a square graduation in the back that's quite flat as well. And so what we have is we have a really nice guideline from the first section, and what we'll be doing is we'll just be recreating that as we work along. As I said, just kind of very gently over-directing it in order to keep a little bit more of a square flat feeling. If you do have any questions when we're live, you know, Francesco, who's behind the camera, will be more than happy Hello there. To, uh, to ask them for you as well. So even if it's past the live or in the live, we can answer any questions you have. Cool, so that's the second section. So again, that really nice modern flat graduation. I absolutely love it. I think it's really, really got a very cool feeling whenever you do that. I love this kind of hair as well, because you really see the shape building, you really see the expanded shape. You know, you always have to think a little bit about how curly the hair is and how much it will jump out. 
one thing that I always do when I have anyone come in with curly hair is I actually look at what length it is currently. So I wear, how, where it falls on the face or the body. And then I pull the hair straight. So I kind of see how much curl there is. So I can imagine if the hair is here and when I pull it down, it reaches down there. You can imagine how much the hair jumps to create that much length. So you can imagine if you start taking off so much, it's gonna jump up quite a lot. So you can start to think in your mind, how curly is this hair? How much is it likely to jump? How much can I cut off as well? So I think those things are, are make it a lot easier to cut curly hair. If you're a little bit afraid of how much the hair will jump, you can always try and assess it when it's curly and see, but just make sure they haven't done anything to adapt their curls. They haven't tried to curl it more or less or straighten it or anything like that. So we can see a really cool shape in my opinion coming in. It's really quite a nice flat shape. So it just works a little bit flatter as well. It's really nice. Let me just make sure that we grabbed it. What we'll do is we'll cross check horizontally afterwards, but after I've done both sides. So first I'm just completing one side for you here, but you can see the flatness of the building. It looks really nice. And what we'll do is we'll do the other side for you now as well. Do you tend to work a lot with these shapes, Michael, in the salon? <coughs> Yeah, I think it's very varied in the salon, to be honest. I, you know, I do like these kind of more flatter shapes. Obviously, in a salon, it really depends on your client base, you know, and what they're into. Obviously, Hazel's really cool. So, you know, she, uh, she, she was quite open. She said she wanted it more flatter in the back, but tighter in the bottom. Um, you know, she liked the more rounded shape through the top. So already I had that feeling that this is going to be a, a really cool shape to go from flat into curls. But what I do is I try and always adapt what I'm doing. I never just try and give a generic, you know, kind of everyone gets the same thing. So, you know, you really try and tailor make each one for the individual and, and their face shapes and what's going to work. Obviously, Hazel's really beautiful, so we're really lucky that a lot will suit her, you know. But uh, she's got a beautiful neck as well, and this will just accentuate that. We actually been really working with graduation today. Yeah, yeah, we, we did a really nice class, um, a round class. So, so the students started on their first day and we did a little demonstration of some round graduation as well. So, so this is gonna be nice, a little different, a little bit more square in the back. But yeah, always when you, when you kind of wanna build these shapes, the graduation is the number one. And I always find it interesting, people struggle a lot with graduation, but I think once you kind of understand that you're building the shape you know, what angle you take builds it more or less. It, it becomes much less complicated, I think. And it's a really fantastic tool to use. As soon as you get above the hairline, it's really the only way to build the head shape. Absolutely. Cool. So let us know where you're tuning in from, guys, as well. You know, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear where you're from. That would be really cool as well. All right. So we've got a nice flat shape here going on as well from the back. I can just see in the mirror, I'm really enjoying the way that's coming out. So that's looking great. So what we'll do is we'll move on from the back onto the sides now. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this out. And we see the length that we have, it kind of reaches all the way down. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking horizontal sections here and I'm gonna be connecting it through to what we've done in the back. So I'm just gonna probably take two sections to do this. So I'll move the hair a little bit out of my way so it's easier to work through. And what I'll be doing is I'll be pulling it out and I'll be finding the nice corner that we have from the back in order to connect it in. So again, I'm not removing a huge amount from the sides because I quite like it as well. horizontally all the way up to the side to side or yeah just for this one two sections we have on the side so it's a very small amount but it gives us a nice base because really what I'm doing now is I'm giving the whole of the underneath a nice base for the top to sit on so we're going to create nice curliness with a nice fringe so I think it's very important that the sides and the back are kind of the base for that roundedness that's going to sit on top afterwards so I'm just creating a really nice baseline I would say for what's about to go over the top of it it's a nice canvas for the rest of the hair cut to sit on, let's say. The 
again, there's a little bit of more flatness there. It marries in with the back as well. We've got quite a nice shape coming in, so that's really cool. Looking nice already. Yeah, really so it, cool. you can kind of see how this is a nice baseline to work with. And when the rest of the curling is so over the top, you can imagine that this supports the shape really nicely. Of course. We have a question from Dominic. Hi, Dominic. Hi, Dominic. So we have from tuning in from Malta. Okay. <clears throat> nice place. So um, the question is, um, white tooth comb is to have soft, te soft attention, right? It is indeed, um, but obviously in this case, it's also to get through the hair a lot easier. So mostly wide teeth is to get a soft kind of finish. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm actually using the wide teeth, but I'm putting in a fair amount of tension as well. So I'm kind of um, going against that principle in a way by using the wide teeth. So for me personally today, I'm using it more to make it easier for me to get through the hair and comb it a bit nicer, as opposed to using it for the normal reason you would on straight hair, which is to have less tension. So I hope that answers your question. And I just think that is, is a really good way to try and, and deal with this hair better and be able to create what you're looking for. So you can always adapt your tension, judging by how much you pull the hair or not. So yeah, it's a cool shape coming in. I like it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work through the top. So this is a, you know, quite a fun, quick technique that I'm doing here. So I'm just going to have a little check through the sides here and make sure that the blend in the corner is nice. Up here. Perfect. So I took that corner a little bit tighter. And again, we can kind of see the shape building out nicely. Nice. So it's Beautiful. We have another question from, I hope to say it well, Keith? Keith from Brazil. Keith? Keith from mm -hmm. Brazil. Let us know. <laughs> Let us know. Thanks. Um, he noticed that we, you haven't wet the hair too much. Is there a reason why? Yeah, the hair was already quite wet when I started, um, but I felt there afterwards it already has quite a lot of moisture in it. You know, we've got quite a bit of conditioning agents in here as well. So I haven't yet had the urge to do it. I haven't yet had the urge to soak the hair too much more. You know, again, I just feel like it's not necessary. Now, if I was combing through and I felt like I couldn't get through the hair that easily, then I might be more inclined to wet it down a little bit more. So that might happen soon. But for now, I feel like I'm getting through the hair quite easily. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking a nice center section as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a nice center section. I'm sectioning off the two other sides that we've done as well. So we've got one in the middle, two on either side. And what I'm doing is I'm just rolling the hair to get it out the way. And what I'm going to do now is it's just going to allow it to cut in. So I've got the section through the top that I'm going to work with. Now, the length actually at the front is only a little bit too long because when Hazel came in, we saw that it was kind of sitting at the right length. It just needed to be lifted slightly. So my aim here is to actually not cut too much from the front so we get that nice soft fringe, but have it more connected to the back as well. So we're gonna be looking to take the kind of length we have here and really connect it to the front without taking too much hair off. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small amount of hair to work with, just a little bit. I'm gonna lift the hair up. I'm gonna take a little bit from the back that I've already cut so that will be my guideline essentially. And I know that if I want to save more length in the front, the best thing to do is to actually pull the hair more back. But I can also start to check where I'm going with this. So I'm again looking at where my fingers are pointing. They look like I'm gonna cut about so much of the hair off. So I'm okay with losing that much length from the front. It's not a lot, so that's okay with me. So I'll start working through that now. We'll just take a little bit more hair and we'll do the same thing as well. So we'll start to move the hair backwards. The more you move the hair back, the more length you save in the front. But I'm not just going to guess, I'm also going to check physically. I'm going to pick the hair up and look at it and see where the length in the front reaches as well. So again, picking the hair up from the front, making sure that we're not cutting off too much. And so once I'm happy, I'll then connect it in as well. I think keep tracking where you're going because it's really easy to take off a little bit that can change the whole haircut sometimes. Of course. 
I mean, every little counts, right? Uh, that's essentially what it is. So we're always looking and thinking about not what we're cutting also, but where we're going with it. You know, where is that end length going to be? So it's things that we also checked before we started to make sure that the concept that we had, there was enough length to achieve it. You know, I think especially, you know, after you've had someone with, a, let's say, a creative haircut, you know, or a bit of a dodgy haircut or too much bleach where there are broken pieces, it's always important to really have a thorough look through the hair before you start. You know, it's like on gents as well to check if there's any scarring, just to make sure that you have an idea and, and you see that you're actually going to hit the right points and you have enough hair to do it as well. So we always do a really thorough analysis before we ever start cutting hair as well. Now from the front. And now we don't need to pick up to check a guideline because I have the hair in my fingers now from the front. And I knew we were gonna cut a little bit of the front off, but as I said, I'm happy to do that. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Now, so we have that kind of length. We have the fullness and the roundness as well, which I really like. So what I'll be doing now is I'll be taking some nice vertical sections that will be connecting to the top, to the middle. And after that, I'll be doing the other side and then I'll be connecting it round. So at this point, it's just come very flat up into a triangle layer. We're gonna connect everything to the middle. And then afterwards, we're gonna be coming through and we're gonna be connecting it on either side to the baseline that we've just achieved. Cool, so as we bring the hair more out, I'm gonna clip away the sides here just so I don't get confused with the sides and what I already haven't cut. So I use clips a lot also to help me maintain my spacing for me to remember where I am within the haircut. Now the hair's getting a little bit dry, so I will, I will damp it down a little bit with some water spray. Sorry for the shower hairs. <laughs> there we go. Everyone does say it's raining in England. So there we go. Perfect. So what we're doing is we're following the first section that's our guideline at this point and we're just repeating the same process. We're gonna use over direction to the middle here. And what that will do for me is it will create a little bit more length in the corners, but I know we're gonna come back afterwards and we're gonna cut that all out. So I'm gonna pull everything to the middle first just to get rid of the extra hair. And then I'm gonna be rounding the shape on connecting it to the sides afterwards. Questions about curly hair. You know, this is a great time to ask them as well. <laughs> Obviously, I'm a big lover of curly hair. I'm a little bit biased, but there we go. Cool. If I show you from the side, you can see that we're pulling everything more towards the middle here as we just remove more of the extra hair. And then what we'll do afterwards is we're just connecting it into that triangle basis. So we're just connecting it into that triangle basis. So Michael, where would you base this haircut in one of our courses? Where would you place it? Uh, this will probably be more of an abstract to be honest, mm. um, because it is a connected haircut, but it does have a, a, a combination of shapes. So, Essentially our courses, they're split into three major groups and each of them have a series of three courses in. So the first one is geometric, which is, let's say your classic haircuts, your very classic shapes, you know, not mixed or anything. And then we have abstract, which would be considered maybe salon creative, where I would put this in, where it's more of a mixture of shapes and techniques. And then we have our third one, which is our creative, which is mixing shapes and techniques, but also implementing disconnection as well. So as this haircut has no disconnection, it's not creative, but it's not a classic shape either. So it comes under the category of abstract, which is more salon based work, let's say, or maybe salon creative if you want. It's a really interesting course, it talks a lot about art and design and uh, you know, balance and symmetry as well. So what we're doing now is we're just still pulling everything to the center. This one side is now finished. And so what I'll be doing is I'll be working through now to the other side. And so at this point, it's not connected into the side. It's not connected into the side. So we still have to work through this and connect it into the side at this point. But we've got these section left, these two sections left. 
And so what I'm doing is I'm just going to take a little slice of hair again and pull it towards the middle. So using the middle that we've already cut as a nice little guideline and then working our way through. I'm just going to add some more water. So this is a really nice kind of easy concept, I think, for people to do with curly hair as well. You know, it's very specific in terms of the flat graduation, you know, it's quite a modern cool thing to do. But, you know, it's very easy to do the same haircut I'm showing you, but just not maybe go so flat with the graduation if you want something a little more classic looking. Now, towards the centre and we're connecting it in to what's already been cut before. It's very quite easy as well, I think we're quite easy to understand. And what we'll be doing is we'll do some little head sheets for you later and we'll post them so you guys can see yourself. of our lives before we really appreciate you guys tuning in as always and uh, it will also be on the next live will be on the 7th of March that's for Hairbrain Live and that will be going live in Athens the day before we go and do a nice lovely show out there with Milkshake Hair so that's on the 7th we'll be live in Athens and then also we'll have a show out there on the 9th so you guys can stay tuned for that some really exciting stuff coming up we also have our next class in March, which is Strength, on the 15th and 16th, and we have one place left for that. Cool, so what I've done is I've finished now the top section, but as you can see, the sides are not connected, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I've worked through the back flat, so everything in the back was worked vertical sections, nice and flat to the head. What I did after that, was I came to the side and I worked through horizontally, connecting it, lifting it up as I went. Same on the second side. I then connected the back with a nice triangle layer into the top because we wanted to leave the length through the top as well. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be connecting the sides. So I'm just gonna take some clips out here. Connect the sides. We're really gonna see this shape come into form as well. So we're gonna take Nice vertical sections, which run from the top of the head all the way down. So I'm going to take you know, quite a lot of hair from one side over to the other, just to make sure I don't miss anything and I have a better visual of what I'm doing. So I'm pulling everything over to one side. And what I'm going to do now is I'm looking to connect the top, which is flat, and round it into the side. So we create a bit of a more fun, softer shape. You know? I think round shapes are always fun and soft. And the, you know, because we talk about expanded shape with curly hair, the one that most people end up getting without wanting it is kind of a triangle haircut, yeah. where they leave it too heavy, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. we've all had it. Um, even myself, I remember when I first started hairdressing, some guy said, can I cut the hair? I went, yeah, sure. And then after getting a lovely one length, you kind of end up with, it was long by the way, you end up with this triangle one, <laughs> right? So we've all had the dreaded triangle haircut. Um, so it's, it's part of rite of passage, I think, to have curly hair. You have to go through it. Um, so, you know, the, the, the one that's much more enjoyable and is a more rounded shape. Um, but also, you know, I think this is nice because we're kind of mixing a little bit of a square feeling in the back and the side into a more rounded shape. So it it's kind of has that soft, fun curliness to it rounded shape but it also has a little bit of what feels like a bit of a strength to it you know something that feels a little bit stronger visually to the eye we have a question to from the lovely maria hi maria hi, hi maria how are you doing so um she's asking do you use some special spray for this hair or just so, water so this time we used daviness didn't we it was a conditioning mist yeah it's spray. called dede if if Dede. It's, yeah, Dede. I think it's called this, a conditioning spray. It's really nice, actually. So, uh, so yeah, we just put in a little bit. Obviously, we did do normal conditioner when we shampooed it. 
um, you know, we, 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 we combed through it before we started and then we put a bit of data. I must admit that Hazel's hair is, is quite nice to work with, it is of the softer texture, you know. I've worked with Afro hair before and, and it's been a lot harder, so I think there's different levels as well, but it's, it behaves. It behaves. So <laughs> we can see that that's kind of helped a lot as well, connecting. So for me, I've just turned it to see in the mirror, but we can see a lot more that that's a more rounded, connected, blended shape. So you have that kind of strong shape on the sides. You have that kind of strong flatness in the back. But just connecting that in kind of opens up everything. So we have to do the other side as well now. Don't worry, hey, so we will finish the haircut, I promise. <laughs> so, you know, I think, I think with the curly hair, the important thing is to think about the shape, to think about the expanded shape. You know, there's no point in getting into the real tiny details of, you know, it's not like cutting straight hair where every tiny little piece of hair sticks out. This one is really about getting the vision right, making sure that your shape is really cool and suits and the lengths are correct. Because if you get the shape wrong, you end up with a triangle. And if you get the lens wrong, you end up with something too short. So it's very important to have a very clear vision before you start always of what kind of shape you're going for and make sure that the lens are good. So I'd say that's my top tip. Cool. So we're just combing the hair over to the side now. And what I'm going to be doing is again, we're just taking that corner off. So we're blending the top with the bottom of what we've already created. Squareness to kind of flow into that nice round shape. Would you tend to go quite visual on curly hair, Michael, or just technical? Um, it's technical. It's technical, especially when you cut it like this, because this is wet to dry. Now, if we just brush this hair out and we started to, you know, freehand the top of it, then it would be purely visual. But at this point, where we're taking clean sections and we're using elevation over direction, you know, and, and cutting angles, then you have to work in a vision way. The nice thing is we always talk to students about you know, understanding expanded shapes and on curly hair, it's all expanded shapes and you can literally see it. So, you know, if you did this hair on straight hair, it would still have the same shape. It would still be square with a rounded top, but it would look incredibly different. You wouldn't see physically where your fingers have been. It would just be sitting flat on the head in a certain way. So that's why I love curly hair because you actually get to see what you create in front of your eyes building. Beautiful. So second to last section on the side. This is looking great. Okay, so you can see where that corner is. What happened was it's the underneath that I had already cut. And when we cut the top, we over directed to the middle. So we have this really big corner. And what we're doing is we're just blending that in. So it connects the squareness to the round shape on top and then we have our last section here as well so it's been a really short one guys but sometimes so rather than being too clever about it and trying to do something crazy sometimes just the simplest things have the best results especially when you work with these incredible shapes yeah, and this incredible hair um, we have our incredible model. So, to be honest, guys, that's the basic shape done. What we're going to do now is we're going to dry it for you, and then we're going to show you the end results later. So, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the 7th of March, live in Athens for our next live, and then on the 9th of March in Athens for our next show. And also, we have our course in March at our London Academy here. So, we'll see you soon, guys. Have a good night from London. Bye.